Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to STD Gems. Today we're going to be looking at the Transformers, and believe you me, they are more than meets the eye. So, what we're looking at is STID Transform, obviously, and also for each. So what do these guys have in common? Well, they allow you to pl apply a, uh, an arbitrary function to a range of elements, any kind of you know transformation you want, and that is very flexible. So let's take a look at Transform. This is the main guy we're going to be talking about today. Now before we get started here, there's one thing I want to mention. Whenever you look at any of these uh, functions here, you will see a huge list of you know overloads, different versions of the function. And you might be saying, holy crap, that's a lot of bullshit to learn. Multiply this by all the functions, that's a lot of functions. But it's actually a lot less than you might think. Really, the, the number of overloads is these numbers here. So there's only four overloads. And you might be saying, well, what are all this extra bullshit then? Well, it depends on, it's giving you the versions for different versions of the C++ standard. So before C++20, the, uh, the function, the first overload of the function had this signature. But after C++20, it now has this signature. And if you look at it, the only difference is that it became const expression. Uh, so small changes depending on what version of C++ you're working with. But there's only four overloads, and furthermore, two of these overloads, they take execution policies. And like I said in the very beginning, you don't have to worry about execution policies at this point. They're not even that supported by compilers. So you've really only got two overloads of this function, not the uh, six that it looks like here. It's a lot less to deal with. Anyways, so, transform. The basic version takes a range of input, it takes an output iterator, and it takes a unary operation to apply to each value in that range. And the way it works is simple, it runs over the range, it applies some operations, let's give it std2 upper, and then it'll output the result to the iterator, the output iterator, and that's what you get. So, let's try and run that. So we got input string A, output string B, and we want to do std transform, take our input range like this, and we'll take our output iterator, and we'll just be back inserting into B, and then we want a function which is std to, ah, I guess I don't have it yet, one sec. We need to add cc type in here, so include cc type, and that should give us access to std to upper, and there you go. There is our algorithm, and if we run that chisel, let me just get rid of this separator in here, we don't need that. The inputs, A is dick butt, B is empty, and after we run it, A is still dick butt, and B is dick butt, all capitalized. So, works as intended. Now, another cool thing about std transform is the input iterator and the output iterator can actually point to the same container. So you can work in place. You can give it the input range dick butt here, and you can output to the beginning of this range, and what it'll do is it'll work in place. So it'll take this value, it'll apply the uh, transformation to it, and then it will write the result back into the same element, and it'll do it for all these boys and it will all be good. So, so in order to do that, we just replace this back inserter B with A dot begin, and that should work in place. Let's run it. And there you go. Input A, afterwards, dick bud. So you can work in place, pretty cool. And you might be saying, well, that's cool and all, Chili, but uh, I could already do that with a normal range-based for loop, and it would actually be a lot shorter. And that's, that's true for certain situations. Let me show you something that you can't really do cleanly with a range-based for loop. So STID transform, we got our first version, it takes input range, output iterator. Second version takes two input ranges. Look at this. Input, first one, last one, first two two, and then it has an output. So it takes a first input range, and then a second input iterator, and then an output iterator, and a binary operation. So how does this work? Well, it's actually pretty great. So you give it an input range, and you give it a second input iterator, and an output iterator, and it will iterate over these input ranges in tandem. So first one is going to call your binary uh, predicate or your, your, your binary operation with these two elements. Then your second one is going to call it with these two elements here. 
like this, so on and so forth. And it's going to compute the operation and output it into the corresponding element in the output. Now, you can't really do this that nicely with your range-based for loops if you've known this. Like, if you want to iterate range-based for over two containers in parallel, it's not very clean. You usually have to resort to using indexes. But with transform, it works super sexy. So let's apply a simple transformation to uh, these two vectors A and B here. So we need our input range, which is going to be A.begin, A.end obviously. We need our second input, which is going to be b.begin. Notice you don't have to give the, the full range for the second input. And it makes sense, right? Because if you have full range for a, you know how many elements you're going to iterate on, and so you just need the beginning for b, and you can just increment that one when you're incrementing these ones. So you only have to give the begin for the second input, and then for the output, which I guess I will create a vector for that, like this, we're just going to use std back inserter. And then we got to give our operation, our predicate, or whatever you want to call it. So it's going to take an int, well, let's just call it a, int b. And what we're going to do, for giggles, is we are going to go a plus uh, b squared. So we want to return that. And then we want to close this off. And there you go. There's your transformation done. Uh, note that std transform, it should not modify the, uh, the input ranges. Shouldn't, this function here should not have any side effects. It should do some operation, return a value, have no side effects. That's one of the requirements of std transform. So let's run this here. Now, one thing, we should be outputting to C, right? We don't want to output back into B. Yeah, so we get 55, which is 49. 7 times 7 is 49, plus 6 is 55, yeah. 4 plus 1 is 5, that's correct. 9 plus 9 is 18, that's correct. Okay, so we're getting the correct answers here. And there is a very simple usage of the second form of transform. And I don't think you need me to tell you that this is actually, you know, really powerful. And surprising to me, not a lot. I don't see people talking about this version of std transform very often. I don't see it in, you know, slides when I'm looking up materials for the videos to put in. I, I just, I feel like this is a really underappreciated gem. And uh, you can really put it to more use if you just be aware of its existence. In a way, you can think of transform as like a more powerful version of copy. Copy just takes the value and puts it into another range, but transform takes the value, applies some transformation to it, and then puts it in a different range. Uh, but it is still way more powerful than copy because let's, let's take an example here. Let's say you want to copy values over to here only if the value here is greater than the corresponding value over here. So you want to take the bigger one and store it into this container here. Well, you might be saying, I think I could do that with copy if, but you can't, and there's two reasons for that. Reason number one is when copy if skips a value, so let's say, uh, you know, we copy this one, we don't copy this one, we copy this one. What we want to do is we want to copy it to the corresponding place, but when copy if skips a value, it the output iterator remains in the same place. So you would go like this, and then if we skip these two and output this one, it would go like this. Whereas the situation where we want is we want a more parallel copying of only corresponding elements to here, and that's what you get with transform. You don't get that with copy if. So that's one reason. The second reason is. To compare them to see which one's bigger, you have to be able to input both this range and this range. But copy if only takes the input range, it doesn't take a second input range. So you can't do it with copy if, but with transform, it's very simple. Let's try it out. So we got our two containers A and B. We're not going to need C because we're going to be working in place. Uh, A begin, A end, B begin, and here, the output is also going to be B.begin. That's very simple. So what's our predicate going to look like? Well, don't need any captures. Uh, it's just going to be int a, int b, and in here, we are going to do a. Mm, what we want to do is we want to choose the value that we're going to output. So if a is greater than b, then we want to output a. Otherwise, we want to output b. And 
that's like that and now we just need to return the result and there you go you have your predicate and if we run this here you can see that b has always takes the larger of either a and b so here b is larger so it takes seven here b is larger so it takes two here a is larger so it takes the nine so on and so forth so you can use this to blend two sequences in place you can use it to blend two sequences and output to a third container you can do all sorts of good great shit so yeah transform is superior to copy and copy if obviously it's also superior to range based for loops because you can parallel iterate over two inputs and one output first of all and second of all you have control over the range it doesn't have to be the entire container so great stuff now as far as the limitations of transform go there's a couple first off uh like i said you can't modify the inputs uh and in, in fact it's more strict than that you can't have any side effects for your uh, operations another thing to be careful of is that state transform does not guarantee in order application of the operations so it's not guaranteed to work from the beginning to the end in order uh and so that means if you're trying to maintain some state or something you really can't do that. I mean, you can't do it anyways because you're not allowed to have side effects in your functions, as it says here. But uh, in either in either case, you don't have in order application of the operations. If you want that, use std for each, which we're going to talk about next. So that's std transform. Now let's take a quick look at uh, for each. So up until now, we've been working in the uh, modifying sequence operations section. Uh, we're going to move up here to the non-modifying sequence operations and for each, which is a function that modifies a sequence, but it's in the... N mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, transform is not allowed to have any side effects. It's not allowed to modify its inputs. It has to output a value that goes into the output iterator. Modifying. Okay, I can buy that non-modifying this guy is allowed to modify anything is allowed to have any kind of side effects do whatever the hell it wants and it's in the non-modifying sequence operations hmm anyways there's, there's a lot of dumb naming bullshit in the standard library and this might not even be a fault of the standard library it might just be the people who made the wiki here i don't know anyways let's get on to it it's very simple function it's very easy there's not many versions of it i mean there's there's only really one version if you exclude the ex execution policy bullshit. And it takes a range, and it takes a, fu a unary function, and it applies that function to the range. And that's, that's all. It's basically like a range-based for loop, but you can control the range. It doesn't go over the entire uh, container. And it doesn't have any, uh, doesn't have any requirements on the... Like, it says here const reference but it doesn't have to be const reference so you can be a normal reference you can modify the sequence uh, and it is guaranteed to run in order so you can run some kind of accumulation function or something and you're guaranteed that it will do the operations in order uh, if that is something that uh, is a, would be a problem so yeah it's very simple and again for each n is the same idea, but it takes a single input iterator and it takes a size n. And it, it does your stuff for you. All right, now let's do a quick test of for each. We're gonna double the first five elements in the container A. So std for each, let's try for each n. Huh, doesn't appear to be there. Look at for each n, ah, since C++ 17. So for this video here, I am actually using 2015 Visual Studio 2015 so we don't have access to for each n so let's just do for each it's the same idea anyways it doesn't make a big difference uh, so we do begin we do a dot begin plus five and then we need our operator operation and we're going to take an int we need to take it by reference because we're going to be working in place note that the uh, times and equals two. Note that the operation for for each doesn't return a value. If you return a value, it'll just be ignored. So it's all about, you know, having side effects for for each. And that should just about do her. Yeah, and there we go. We're getting double the values here. Beautiful. And that's for each. And I couldn't show you for each n, but I think you can probably figure it out on your own. It would just, it would just look like this. And it would be the same idea, right? Okay. 
So that's the transform, boys. Now let me just show you a quick example of one place where I've used STID transform. And it's right in the 3D fundamentals. If you guys have been following that one, we've got the pipeline. It does the, uh, you know, the vertex shader, the geometry shader, the pixel shader, all that good stuff is in here. And in process vertices, where it runs the vertex shader, here, STID transform. So we take the, the input vertices, we take the output vertices, Container iterator into the beginning of that, and the uh, the operation is just the vertex shader function. So you pass that in, and it will apply the transformation to your input vertices and give you output vertices. So STID transform fits in very nicely in this scenario. It fits in very nicely in a lot of scenarios. It's just a, it's just a good function to know. Very versatile. And I also want you guys to remember be aware of the two input version of STID transform because it is it's super powerful and I feel like it is really underused not a lot of people really are aware of it and can use it to its full potential so try to keep this guy in mind because he's super cool but that's gonna about do it for today thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video if you did please click the like button it helps a lot and I will see you soon with some more STD gems